Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Words from St Luke's Gospel, the ninth chapter in the 20th verse. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Who is the most important person that you have met this week? Or perhaps I should say the most significant person. A new term, especially for freshers, means a lot of new names, a lot of new faces. Perhaps the most important person you met was the senior tutor. Ultimately, he's in charge of your education, what you're here to do. You'll have come across this week the senior dean, a very important person when it comes to discipline. The titles senior dean and senior tutor connote their importance. And speaking of titles, you've probably also met the provost, not only the head of the college, but a member of the House of Lords. But, of course, for many at Oriel, by far the biggest name on campus is obviously the captain of boats. Another way to answer the question is not about seniority, but about someone's significance in relationship to you. Your tutor, for example, your supervisor, or the other students on your staircase or on your course. In the back of your mind, you've probably been wondering, could this person turn out to be a friend? Might this person be a kindred spirit, even a future boyfriend or girlfriend? And no doubt, we hope that one or two people might see us as being significant in their lives as well. Who we are finds expression in relationship, not just a man or a woman, but a father, mother, son, daughter, a mentor or a friend. In our Gospel reading, Jesus has just performed his miraculous feeding of the 5,000. Once the crowd has gone, he asks his disciples two questions along the same lines that we've just been thinking about. Who do the people say that I am? And secondly, who do you say that I am? The first question is pretty matter of a fact, in person. What do people in general make of my identity? The second question really puts his disciples on the spot. It's a relational question. Who am I to you? What do I mean to you personally? I realise it's quite possible that you're sitting here in chapel tonight and you don't actually know a great deal about Jesus. Most people will have an impression of him as a moral teacher or a wonder worker. So it's interesting that historically people at the time had seen enough to speculate that Jesus of Nazareth was no ordinary man. Who do the people say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. In other words, they think you're someone who's supposed to be dead. The crowd at least reckoned that something supernatural was up. The disciples, meanwhile, have been following Jesus around for quite some time. They've been listening carefully and grilling him with questions. And this is the moment when he asks them point blank to define the relationship. It's almost a a will you marry me sort of moment. Who do you say that I am? Who am I in relationship to you? And Peter's answer knocks it right out of the park. Not just a prophet. You are the Christ of God. Peter recognises Jesus as God's saviour king, the Christ or Messiah. And whatever we make of that this evening, it had a radical impact on the way that Peter and the other disciples related to Jesus going forward. They were transformed. Their lives came to be defined by his life. 
You see, if there really were somebody who turned out to be the son of God, then not only is he the most important person that you could ever meet, but his identity could never be impersonal to you or indeed to any one of us. Do you remember that classic moment in the Star Wars film where Darth Vader says, Luke, I am your father. Luke Skywalker can't just shrug his shoulders at that point. Darth Darth Vader's identity provokes a very personal, and in that case, a very negative reaction. Luke must either accept it or reject it, but he can't ignore it. Similarly, the extraordinary proposition that Jesus is the Christ cannot be shrugged off. He must either be embraced or he must be rebuffed as the God who created us and who keeps the world going. By definition, the Son of God is the most important person you could ever meet. So why is it that so many of us are primed to react with indifference? Quite possibly our experience of church has been dull and boring. Maybe we assume that there's nothing to see here. Maybe we think that we already know the story well enough. But when you read the Gospels carefully, what you find is is not just truth for the intellect, important though that certainly is to us here, but it's truth for the heart, a chance of a relationship. Jesus isn't having an identity crisis. He hasn't forgotten who he is and asks his disciples because he needs to be reminded. He knows full well the impact that he's going to make, like the chance encounter that changes the whole course of your life. Imagine meeting somebody like that in Freshers' Week. Jesus says three things in our reading which don't deserve indifference. First, he says... The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected and killed and be raised on the third day. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was crucified and thousands of people claimed to have seen him risen from the dead. If Jesus laid down his life on behalf of you and me, and if he does have the power to beat death... For those of us who are going to die one day, I think that deserves quite a lot of attention. Next, Jesus says that we are invited to become his friends. If any wants to be my follower, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. Unlike most of our potential friendships, the stakes could not be higher. Those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will save it. It's the golden ticket. You could pursue health, wealth and happiness in all the conventional ways. Or you could throw your lot in with the Son of God and have a very different experience. Finally, Jesus says that friendship with him is precious not only for this life, but for eternity. What is the advantage if you gain the whole world but forfeit yourself? One day life will come to an end and, says Jesus, no one will have any doubt over who he is then. The friends and strangers of this world will carry on into the next one. During your time here at Oriel, you'll invest time getting to know other people, discovering who they are and building some wonderful relationships. If any one of those people claims to be the Christ, please refer them to the welfare team. (laughs) But Jesus is different. And for billions of people through history around the world, 
He's not a stranger, nor is he boring, untrue, or irrelevant. Certainly, Oriel College wouldn't exist today if it weren't for him. For many of us, he's not only the Christ, he is my Lord, my Saviour, and my friend. My opinion of Jesus doesn't change who he is any more than it changes who the senior tutor is. But it does change me. It's a relationship that frees me like nothing else. As I discover more and more of who he is, I begin to get a better sense of who I am as well. And by taking time to hear more about him coming along to chapel perhaps, or reading one of those Gospels, you too will have an answer on the day that he turns to you and says, who do you say that I am? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.